time now to head to the movies, and we don't have to go that far. Uh, in what's being called Zimbabwe's first post-Robert Mugabe era feature film, a movie called Cook Off. The movie has been selected for the prestigious Rotterdam International Film Festival, and it made its African premiere at the Durban International Film Festival. The film's director, Thomas Latuli Brickhill, joins us from our Durban studio, uh, and. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Thomas, if you can uh, hear me. Tell us a bit about your movie. Um, well, as you, as you say, yes, it, is, it was, uh, the, the, has the unique honor of being the first film uh, that was premiered in Zimbabwe um, after the fall of Robert Mugabe. Um, the film, the film is a, it's a romantic comedy. It's, a, it's a, an underdog story. Um, it's, it's the story of a, of a single mother who goes on a reality TV cooking show and then is a little bit out of her depth, um, cooking against a lot of uh, professional chefs. Um, and it's been, as you say, it's been getting very good uh, mm -hmm. um, kind of acclaim so far. So let us stop you there. We're going to have a, take a quick look at that trailer now that you've set us up nicely for the storyline. <laughs> I don't know. I think I missed my chance. Life isn't fair. The time starts now. Ah, you a man. Don't be hip for nothing. She's such a disappointment. I think it's a good thing when people like you know their place. So, we're looking for 16 chefs to take part in the new season of Battle of the Chefs. And this time, there's a cash prize of $10,000. You should enter, Mom. I, I really think you did win. Believe in yourself. You go to school, you have big dreams. Next thing you know, you're selling dollar signs to $5 hookers. Okay, Alison, this is your audition for the Battle of the Chefs. So that's the trailer for the movie Cook Off that's got people in Zimbabwe and across the continent, really got the tongues wagging. Now, Thomas, uh, from what one can glean from the trailer, it's a bit of a comedy, a bit of family values, a strong, independent woman doing it for itself. Why do you think this movie has struck such a chord? Um, I, I, well, I think, you know, a, a lot of the narrative that we get, uh, not only about Zimbabwe, but about Africa in general, is this kind of negative story. You know, we tend to see films about Africa that, that are about warlords or about HIV. And it's not that these problems don't exist. It's mm -hmm. that this is a very small part of the story. So we wanted to tell a story that's uh, a bit more universal um, and a story that's just about n normal, you know, uh, normal people uh, going about their normal lives. Um, um, uh, yeah, and I think I think maybe that's just just struck a chord with people that it's it's something different. It's a a different narrative from what we're used to seeing on the continent. Um, now, uh, if you look back at South Africa's history uh, in the post post apartheid uh, South Africa, we saw a number of movies being made about South Africa's liberation struggle. Now, obviously, Zimbabwe had its own revolution many many years ago, but there's a transition happening now again post Robin Mugabe. Do you think we'll see films about Mugabe's Zimbabwe being made um, and the transition uh, post reign? Or do you believe we'll see more of these kinds of movies being made that is more universally appealing? Um, to be honest, I think there'll be a little bit of both. Um, obviously, as Zimbabwean filmmakers, we also want to you know, take advantage of the stories which, which have gone worldwide. Um, and the story of, of Robert Mugabe in general, uh, and the story of, of, you know, of his demise uh, in November. That's a story that really captured the world's attention. So as filmmakers, we would want to tell those stories, um, but that's the, you know, th those are not the only stories. I think we have, we have such a rich uh, uh, wealth of storytelling in Zimbabwe. Um, it's maybe more that we've, we've really not had the opportunities to be able to tell our stories. Um, our, our film, as you say, although it came out, um, it was the first film after uh, Mugabe resigned, but we made that film during Mugabe's time, and it was a very difficult process. 
Um, the, the film survived. Uh, there were riots in town mm. while we were shooting, and one of our actresses got caught up in it. Um, we, we had power cuts. We had, uh, you know, we were deep in the financial crisis mm. while we were making this film. And all those factors contributed to, you know, really making it difficult for us uh, to complete the film at the end of the day. But going forward, I think, um, you know, we're, we're hopeful and optimistic that, um, that this is the dawn of, of a new era in Zimbabwe and a new era of Zimbabwean filmmaking as well. Um, uh, we've obviously spoken about various issues around Zimbabwe and how the economy and various industries have been impacted over the last couple of decades or so. How is the film industry, what state is the film industry in at the moment? Are we hoping to see a reversal of that brain drain inside your industry as well? I think so. I think so. Um, th there's a lot of talent. I mean, so our, our film, uh, one of the things that we were very adamant about when we were making it um, is that it's a completely Zimbabwean product. Uh, all the cast and all the crew who worked on it are Zimbabwean. Um, and it was, we, we wanted to show that just because we haven't been working, because you know, the economy has been down, as you point out, and there's not been a lot of stuff going on, it doesn't mean that we don't have the talent or the expertise. Um, it's just that you know, no investors have been interested in putting money into a Zimbabwean film. And so it would seem that, uh, that you know, we can't produce something that's of significantly uh, good quality. And hopefully what we've done with Cook-Off is show that uh, we do have the talent and we do have the expertise um, if just we can be given the chance um, to produce something uh, you know, proper. Now, the premiere in Zimbabwe was apparently held on a, a, homemade, a homemade cinema on a rooftop. That must have been quite a magical night for you and your team. Um, yes, it was. Um, it, it was not exactly by, uh, by choice. Um, we had wanted to, to premiere in, the, in the, the movie house in Zimbabwe, but unfortunately um, they wanted us to hire out the entire cinema. And it being a, a micro-budget film, um, you, we didn't have money for, for that kind of premiere. And so, uh, you know, not wanting to let down the, the various uh, fans who'd already caught wind of the fact that we were making this movie, we kind of just had to take matters into our own hands and, and, and come up with a plan. Um, and so, yes, as you say, we, we premiered on, on the roof of a hotel. Um, we built our own screen um, and borrowed a projector and a PA system and, and screened our movie um, and, and really that, that was the moment when we kind of got the feedback that yes, this was the movie that we'd been trying to make. Um, yeah, w when we went to Rotterdam, we were the first film from Zimbabwe to be there for 22 years. Wow. Um, and actually the last film that was there w was a liberation struggle film. It was uh, the film Flame um, about Zimbabwe's liberation struggle. So um, it, it was really a great honor that, that we were picked after so long to be the film to, to show that Zimbabwe is, is maybe uh, back on the world stage in terms of filmmaking. Well, we can only wish you everything of the best for this movie and indeed for the Zimbabwean film industry. It's good for the entire region. We thank you for your time today. Thomas Latuli Brickhill, the director of the Zimbabwean film that's been making waves, it's called Cook Off.